colors today are burnt umber, raw sienna, um, aquamarine blue, ochre, and green. So welcome everyone. We will not need a blow dryer for this project. Yay. <laughs> now you will want two containers of water. And some brushes, not a big brush. The biggest brush I've got today is a six. That's this one. The other ones are smaller, anywhere from a one, two, three, and an angle brush. And you want some paper towel on hand. So some of the colors that we've got on there, we've got a green and we've kind of got an olivey green. So that will be green and ochre mixed together that will give us that olive color. Some of the browns, we'll do some brown, uh, which is burnt umber. We'll do some raw sienna. We'll lighten some up. We'll darken some a little bit um, for that little, a little poof of, of what looks like pink under the eye is actually raw sienna, just, just um, with just a little bit of, a uh, little bit of water. So it's not a big blob, but it is um, a pinky, a rosy kind of color. Uh, we are going to paint a hedgehog today, so uh, hopefully you have your drawing, your diagram already done. So here it's, it's already on there, and we're going to get right into putting on some fun colors. These are going to be wet on dry, so we're not wetting the canvas first. I am going in to go into my, my palette with uh, for burnt umber. So my burnt umber is a brown color. So let's get into art mode. If there's anything uh, troubling you, just set that aside in the parking lot just for this one hour period of time. Whether you need to pick that up again later or not, it, it's, that's up to you. But this hour of time may give you a little bit of solace in between. So let's take a deep breath in. We'll do this three times. Deep breath in, hold it at the top, and then release fast or slow. So deep breath in and hold it and release. Drop those shoulders. Really let those, let that stress, anything go. Another deep breath in. At the top of the breath, hold it and release and another deep breath in and hold it for a second and release and just shake out those shoulders and we'll just release a little bit and remember this is just a piece of paper unless you're using a canvas and in that case it's just a canvas so sometimes a canvas just wants to be a canvas doesn't want to accept paint the way we want it to a piece of paper might just want to be a piece of paper might not want to be an artistic uh, creation at this point so so um just gonna have a look there was somebody else coming on today just gonna see if she's made it um nope not seeing okay so we had a few new people and um one of them was was anna so if you've made it today anna great if not we'll see you we'll see you next time or another time so i'm looking at burnt umber so this is my burnt umber so it's a brown color and it's quite dark i'm going to add water i'm going to add more water I'm going to add even more water. I'm going to add even more water until it's just a tan color, just a really light tan color. So you can see I started quite dark, added water, added water, added water, down to just a tan color at the bottom. So we start off dark, dark brown or burnt umber, and then I'm going lighter with water, lighter with water, lighter with water, just to a tan color. So you can still see with the white in the background that it is white behind. That tan color is the color we want to use for our hedgehog. 
So if you need to clean out a little space in your palette, maybe you've already got a clean space, I'm just using paper towel and a little bit of water to clean out a little spot here. But we're going very, very light. So in your palette, put a little bit of that burnt umber and add water and add water and add water until it's very light. And then we have our hedgehog. And with our hedgehog, we're going to paint the whole body this tan color. So I'm not painting, I can paint the inner part of the ears, but not the inside. So I'm leaving the inside, but I'm coming down around the body, all the way down to the bottom, painting the whole hedgehog in this tan color. And this is wet on dry, and I'm, I can go right over the eye, and do his little, little paw, little hand, little arm. And it doesn't have to be completely even. If there's little patches that are different colors throughout, it's not about being perfect and uniform. It is a hedgehog. They do have variations of color throughout their body. We're just painting that whole body, just a tan color. So it's gonna look different from what's on the white on the outside. In order for this hedgehog to dry without interruption, we're going to move down below and we're going to do some of that greenery. So I'm going to mix a little bit of green and a little bit of ochre. So if I look at my green, what green am I using? I'm using hooker's green. So I've got hooker's green and ochre. And when I mix the two together, I get an olive color. So yours might be a little more yellow or a little bit more ochre or a little bit more green, but I'm just coming up with an olive -y color. And that olive -y color is what I want to paint some of those leaves. So some leaves are straight and some leaves have a rounded, they look like a little upside down heart. The ones that are the heart or an olive, or sorry, an oval shape, those ones I'm going to paint with this olive color. So I'm just looking for the ones that are a rounded shape, And I've got a couple on the little body. So I can go ahead and I can put that color on top. So mine's on an easel and my darkest color is dropping to the bottom. I'm not worried about that. I think that's gonna look okay. But if you're painting flat, yours will look more uniform.
And then I'm going to use the Hooker's Green, which is a little bit darker, which I showed you at the beginning. Hooker's, whoops, Hooker's Green. Hooker's Green is this color. If you want to use Sap Green or any other green, that's okay. If you want to lighten it up, that's fine. And that color, I'm going to paint all the other leaves that are long and narrow. So some of them have a different shape. So those with a different shape, I'm painting them in the darker green. So again, I am painting on an easel, so some of that paint is dropping down to the bottom of my leaf, and that's okay. I think I got them all. So I'm painting all of those other leaves in that darker color. And then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I've got a zero brush. It has a very fine point. And I'm going to use my raw sienna. So different siennas have different colors. Mine happens to have a reddish tint to it. So this is my raw sienna. And I'm going to very finely go onto each branch. with a very fine brush. If you have watercolor pencil, the pencil crayons that you want to use for this, then that would be okay. I'm just tracing over with, the, with just with the tip of my brush on the pencil lines that I've done for the branches or the stems. So if I find that when my, I dip my brush in my paint, if it's clumpy at the bottom, then I'm just twirling my brush only so I have paint just at the tip. Now it's also okay to go ahead and add a few extra branches if you like, just for a little detail, just at the end, just if you like. Maybe a couple coming down below. And that's what's going to give your picture a little bit more unique look, a little bit more of your personality. This is your hedgehog and your picture. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to outline with burnt umber, but with a lightened burnt umber, not as light as the body, but burnt umber with just a hint of water. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to outline the hedgehogs shape. I'm starting at the top, still using my zero brush, 
water it down a little bit so it's not really dark coming around the mouth. Down around under the chin, right to that little arm. And that, that arm actually comes on right in the front of the body. So it has a little, little marking where it's in front of the body. Just that little mark that indicates that it's in front. And then down around to the bottom. Just gives a little tummy. And with that same brush, my, my zero brush, I'm going to start to outline or line the little hairs on the outside of the body with the burnt, uh, yes, with the burnt umber. I'm just covering off whatever lines I've got with the burnt umber. So all of those lines We'll need to have this color to start with. Well, there's a lot of them, so take your time, have a deep breath, drop those shoulders. These are just hairs on a hedgehog, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And that was burnt umber. So the next color we're going to incorporate in our fur on the outside or our little, little um, I guess it is fur, but they, it has quills as well. They're, they're funny little things that when they're threatened, they have little quills like a porcupine. They're, they're, um, they're quite uh, able to defend themselves even though they're really tiny. So with raw sienna, just a little bit of water I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover over this little hedgehog again. So I'm going to start to build and I'm going to make his hair go up a little bit at the top, just up a little bit, just a little puff at the top, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back over and I don't have to go on top of all of the colors that I did. If I cover some of them, that's okay. But I'm going in between them with this new color and I'm coming right to the inside of the body. So right, right to the inside and out and try to go the same direction. These little hairs or little fur, they, it falls down as it goes. So now you should have two different colors on there. You'll be able to see that you've got some burnt umber there a little bit lighter and you've got some raw sienna. So we've got a blend of colors now. We've got a little bit reddish and a little bit brown. If you want to finish those, and while you're doing that, we're almost half time. So I'll read this card. This is an affirmation card. Remember always that you not only have the right to be an individual, you have an obligation to be one. 
That's from Eleanor Roosevelt. So set a small goal for your day, whatever that would be. That would be your goal. Remember always that you not only have the right to be an individual, you have an obligation to be one. From Eleanor Roosevelt. Set a small goal for your day. What would my goal be for today? I think one of my goals today would be to sit for a few minutes in meditation and watch my birds at the bird feeder. I think that's a nice goal for the day. Doesn't have to accomplish great things. It actually will give me another opportunity to think about what I might like to paint or what my day will in entail tomorrow. Now let's do a funny little mixture with color. Let's mix raw sienna and ochre together. So I have raw sienna. Oops, I have, oh, that's ochre. I have ochre and I have raw sienna. And I'm going to mix the two together. I'm coming up with sort of a yellowy, a softer color. So again, that was ochre and raw sienna mixed together. And we're going back on this fur again. And let's, I'm using a number three brush. So I've got a little heavier, it's a number three, it's gonna be a little thicker. And I'm going to start to add a little more fullness to the hairs of my hedgehog. I'm not trying to wipe out any color that's there, but I'm just adding a little more fullness because it's a thicker brush. It's going to take away some of that white. So it's giving a little more fullness, but all of my colors un underneath are still going to show. And then I'm switching down to a number two, number two brush, pointed brush, and my burnt umber without mixing any water with it. So it's going to be a solid color. I can practice on my, on my sheet ahead of time. You can practice on, on your palette if you have one. And I'm just practicing making thin lines. If my brush has a lot of paint, I'm just twirling that brush so that it's just paint on the tip. So I want this burnt umber, full strength, and just tiny lines. Now with that, with that color, I'm going to start to add some dark spots throughout my hedgehog. So now I'm making it a little bit darker. And I don't have to do every one, but when I get to the end, I'm going to lift my brush off. So I have a pointed end at the end of it. I'm looking for almost like a little quill in there. And I'm going to take the same color and I'm going to paint around the outside of the ear and then just move that away from the ear. So it circles the ear, but it also looks like it's a nice dark spot behind the ear, but also I throw a few quills in there or a few dark slashes of the paint. You can add a few like little random ones if you like. They don't all have to be identical. 
just a few random ones just for that little wildness of it. And we'll work a little bit at the top of the head with raw sienna. So just with the raw sienna, I'm just going to, from the nose up, I'm just going to do just a little detail just on the top of the head. So that's just with raw sienna, just a little bit of color, just at the top of the head, just from the nose. And then with the same color underneath the nose, I'm just going to paint a little shadow, just, it just looks like a mouth. And with the same color, just above that little arm, I'm just going to put a little shadow just above the arm. And I'm going to put a shadow underneath that arm, just down onto the belly. And I'm going to take some of that raw sienna, water down, and below the eye, I'm doing a little circle patch. So this is just with raw sienna, and it's just a little circle patch. Not too dark, just need some paper towels, soak up that excess. So it's just a little mark, just like a little blush underneath that eye. And if I still have a little bit of puddle of that raw sienna and ochre that I mixed together, it was kind of an amber color. I'm going to just take a little bit of that watered down. If you still have it together, it's a little bit of ochre and a little bit of raw sienna, really watered down. And you know that I don't like everything to be completely perfect. So I'm just going to give a little bit of blemish here just on the body, just a little bit, and maybe a little bit up here, just a few little markings, maybe something up here. So it's not. It just looks like more of a critter, not perfect. Just a few little dashes of color. And I can take that same color and just put it inside the ear. I'll just watered down just inside the ear. This gives a little bit of color. And then let's give this little critter some personality. So I'm going to mix two colors together. I'm mixing ultramarine blue and raw sienna. So it's more blue than the sienna, so I get a dark color, a very dark color. And that's the color I'm going to use to do the eye. So again, that's ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mixed together. And we're just going to do that eye. I'm going to use that same color 
to do the nose. I'm just going to use a little bit of burnt, or sorry, raw sienna, just to bring that, that fur from the top of his head just a little bit closer, more into his forehead. This looks like it's kind of out there a little bit. So I'm just going to bring it in just a little bit. So I've just lifted that hair just a little bit more on the top of of its head. I've got the nose, I've got the eye, I've got that little, it kind of disappeared, it dried too light. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, just a little bit of a blush underneath that one eye. A little bit of color for unevenness. And then I'm going to do a wet on dry below the leaves. So I'm using clear water below the leaves. And if I happen to hit some leaves and they pick up a bit of color, I'm not worried about that. So I'm just putting clear water at the bottom of my canvas underneath all those leaves. Just clear water. If it starts to run a little bit, that's okay. Uh, underneath the leaves. So if you hit a leaf and it starts to run, that's okay, but it's underneath the leaves and underneath the branches. Just clear water. And once I've got that clear water on, I'm just going to put some dots of ochre. And I'm just going to let that run. I've just got some dots of ochre down there. And I'm going to add to that wet surface some ultramarine blue. So it's going to turn into a soft looking green, a blurry kind of green surface at the bottom of your canvas. So if it's turned out a sort of a soft blurry green, that's your intent. So that again, that was just dotting on some ochre and then dotting on some ultramarine blue in that wet canvas. And it should start to blend. And you can just let it do whatever it does. If it's going to blend and run, that's okay. That's good. Now we could have given this hedgehog a background or sky before we did it. But I kind of like the wow effect that we're going to get from putting on a color after the fact. So I'm wetting my brush with water. I've got a fairly large brush. I've got my number number six, and I'm just going around the outside with clear water. Now I'm not touching the head ho hedgehog, so I don't have so much water that it's going to run into the hedgehog, but I'm just using a brush going around the outside, just with clear water, close to the little critter, but not quite touching, just clear water all the way around. Just priming my canvas. And this is where it might be challenging for some of you. We do not need to do the whole canvas. You can leave the outside white 
and you can leave the inside close to the hedgehog white, giving a halo effect. So on that water that I've put, now I'm just going to add my ultramarine blue. It's going to be lighter and darker in some places. I do not need to cover the entire canvas. I'm leaving some white. So it has a bit of a halo effect. If I want to add a little bit darker, I can. While it's still wet, I can just add that in there and it will blend. And if you touch your hedgehog and it starts to blend a little bit in with the color, that's okay too. But there he's got a nice little halo effect. So he stands out in the middle of the sky. He's got the nice little grass below him. So we've incorporated that ultramarine blue into the eye so it should match well. If for whatever reason you want to darken that up, you can go ahead and do that now. A little bit ultramarine blue and raw sienna together was what we used. So if you want to, sometimes when things dry, they dry a little bit lighter. So we'll just darken that up a little bit. And I'm going to use that same color just to outline the inside of that ear, just so it shows up a little bit, a little bit more fully. I'm going to use that same color from the eye and the nose to outline the inner part of the ear. And if you want to, that same color, you can add a few extra quills just in that color. It's a little bit darker. And what's left to do is decide where do you want to put your artist signature. So with that raw sienna and ultramarine blue, I'm mixing it together again, getting a nice dark color. And I'm going to use that to sign my picture. I just want to make sure that that's dry on the bottom and it is so. That's the color that I'll use then it's got a nice congruent color with the rest of the canvas. So this is your hedgehog. That's what you can do in one hour. And we'll see if Troy is ready for us for our collage picture.